In this lecture, we were looking at eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So these are going to be two ways for us to measure how the action of a matrix is really affecting the underlying transformation of the space. Um, and in particular, it'll allow us to see for what vectors in our original space um, is our linear transformation uh, acting by merely scaling them by some constant. Let's stick to just considering transformations from a space back into itself. So given some transformation t that goes from rn to rn, one of the questions that we'll be interested in is looking at for what vectors in our original space does our linear transformation act merely by scaling. So the traditional uh, constant that we're going to use is the letter lambda. So we'll be wondering for what vectors v in this um, does our transformation return a constant multiple of our original vector. So if we look at this fairly classic picture, um, so the Mona Lisa itself is fairly classic, but this image of eigenvectors and eigenvalues is fairly classic as well. Um, if you look at the blue vector, the linear transformation given uh, that's taking the Mona Lisa on the left to the image of the Mona Lisa on the right, the blue vector um, actually stays fixed. So this linear transformation preserves vectors in the x direction, but it rotates and uh, ever so slightly this red vector. So this type of transformation, a shear transformation, will tend to only have one eigen, eigenvector. So this acts by scaling the vector in x and uh, rotating or transforming our, um, our vector uh, in y. Uh, let's look at calculationally how we could actually see this. So for a few examples, I have three different possible matrices here. Um, we could actually look at the action of these matrices and see, um, for, for all three of these, there's going to be a pretty clear way for us to look at the action. Um, in this particular matrix, if we start out with our unit vectors in x and y, uh, maybe we'll give our our second unit vector a different color so we'll be able to see the the action after transformation. Um, our matrix here acts on our x vector by multiplying by 3. So it's going to scale this vector up by length 3 and it'll take our vector in y and scale it by negative 2. So in this case our two eigenvectors involved are actually our, our original two, uh, our identity vectors here. So we have EX is one of our eigenvectors and EY is another, is another eigenvector. And our, uh, what we're going to call the eigenvalue is just the scaling involved in this case. So our, um, our linear transformation A acting on EX returns 3 times EX and our A acting on EY returns negative 2 times EY. So this is an example of a matrix with two eigenvectors and two eigenvalues. Looking at our next matrix, this is actually very similar. So this is, by the way, a shear matrix that we see on, on, in the middle here. Um, if we look at our behavior now, still of our, our two identity vectors, um, we'll see that actually x is still going to have a unit transformation. So in this case, the x is not, um, isn't changed by the action of a. So x is still going to be an eigenvector of our linear transformation. However, our vector, uh, our unit vector in the y direction is going to be replaced by a vector um, that is just the, the vector 1, 1. So in a matrix of this form, we actually only have one eigen, um, eigenvector, namely EX, which comes back as a constant multiple of itself. So this is one eigenvector for a matrix of this type. So shear matrices um, uh, in R2 will have exactly one eigenvector. And finally, if we look at the action of the matrix on the right, um, 
this is actually going to be fairly interesting in that what this particular matrix does is it returns a rotation um, by 90 degrees of our original matrix. So this linear transformation will have no eigenvectors, at least no real eigenvectors, given that any, um, any uh, vector will be rotated instead of scaled. So in this case, there is no eigenvectors since this is the rotation matrix, rotation by 90 degrees. On the previous slide, we looked at three examples of three different transformations from R2 to itself and just examined where it sent vectors. Um, this isn't really a, a, a broad way to go about calculating what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are, so what we're going to use is actually something called the characteristic polynomial and the characteristic equation. So in the center of this screen, I have a, um, a note about if I have an eigenvector in the first place, so an eigenvector for some transformation, let's say A, it goes from Rn to Rn. If this acts by scaling, that's the same as simply multiplying our vector V by some constant, which we'll, we'll again, we'll stick with calling this lambda. Um, if we rewrite this as A minus, sorry, A uh, V, minus lambda v is equal to zero, um, this really captures our relationship, um, you know, we've now got a matrix equation that we could solve, but unfortunately this constant here is not particularly helpful for us to rephrase this as a, as a, a matrix, so we'll rewrite this as um, lambda times the n by n identity matrix times v is equal to the zero vector, and now we're going to be able to factor this out in a way that makes sense. So this a minus lambda times the identity matrix says that every coordinate in our vector v was scaled up by a constant lambda. And so this a minus lambda i n equals the zero matrix is really the relationship we'd like to capture. And the way we'll go about actually computing what these lambdas should be is instead of trying to, to solve for an equation like this in particular, what we'll use is we're going to calculate our determinant of a minus lambda i n. And since our uh, determinant of the left should be the determinant on the right, the determinant of the zero matrix is just zero. So we'll be able to use um, this, which is called the characteristic polynomial, to actually solve for our lambda. Um, once we have a lambda in hand, we'll be able to go back and use this to identify what our eigenvector is. Let's actually compute an example of this. So I've put a matrix A on screen, and we know from the previous slide that the way that we can get to what are at least our eigenvalues and remember, this is the, um, the amount that we're scaling our matrix by. And from there, to our eigenvectors, which will be the, uh, the things that are actually being scaled, we actually are going to have to start with the eigenvalues and move from there to the eigenvectors. So we're going to use the determinant of a minus lambda, in this case i2, equals 0, to actually figure out what our eigenvectors lambda are going to be. So for this a, what we're going to look at is um, a minus lambda i2, which is uh, 2, 5, 1, negative 2, minus uh, lambda times the identity matrix, which should be, uh, we're always going to just see lambdas along the diagonal. Note that this becomes 2 minus lambda, 5, 1, and negative 2 minus lambda. So normally you actually won't have to take this intermediate step of actually writing these out. You're just going to look down the diagonal of your matrix and subtract lambda 
from each entry on the diagonal. So this isn't something where it's going to be computationally intensive to set this up. Um, once we have this set up, we're going to take our determinant of a minus lambda i2, which was the determinant of this matrix 2 minus lambda, 5, 1, and negative 2 minus lambda, which is 2 minus lambda times negative 2 minus lambda minus 5 times 1. So this simplifies to, if you look over here, this is actually minus 4 minus lambda squared. So this is um, uh, the difference of squares. So this is 2 plus lambda with a negative um, times 2 minus lambda minus 5. So our determinant is going to simplify to lambda squared minus 9. So we'd like to figure out where lambda squared minus 9 is 0, which is pretty clearly at eigenvalues plus and minus 3. So this says whatever vectors that we're scaling, we actually do have two distinct eigenvectors present here, sorry, eigenvalues present. So since this is only a two by two matrix, this means this linear transformation actually has, um, we can guarantee that it's gonna have two eigenvectors because it has two eigenvalues. So now that we have this in hand, let's actually use our eigenvectors specifically to calculate what our eigenvalues would be. And so I'll put the setup on this slide, and then on the, the next slide we'll, we'll finish up um, how we would calculate these. But no, we now know that, out, uh, that A minus 3 times the identity matrix and A plus 3 times the identity matrix, both of these are going to scale, are going to, should be um, equal to the zero matrix. So all we're going to wind up having to do is look at the matrix um, so 2, 5, 1, negative 2, minus 3, 0, 0, 3. This should be our zero matrix. Or sorry, not our zero matrix, but it, there should be some vector that, um, that maps to zero under this. So we're looking for elements inside of our kernel. And uh, 2, 5, 1, negative 2, um, plus... 3, 0, 0, 3. So this is minus negative 3. So our two matrices um, that we're going to be eventually calculating um, calculating what vector is in our, what, what, the shape of vectors inside our kernel, um, we're looking at the matrices negative 1, 5, uh, 1, uh, 1, and negative 5. So there's one of our matrices that we're going to try to figure out elements inside our kernel. And 5, 5, 1, 1. So these are our two key matrices that we're going to be playing with on the next slide. And so whatever elements we find in the kernel, we'll pick some generator of the kernel of each of these, and that'll determine a basis um, for our eigenvectors. All right, remember from our previous slide that we calculated that our eigenvalues or plus and minus 3. So we can see our two matrices that we obtain by um, taking our, our matrix A and subtracting off 3 and subtracting off negative 3. So we got the two, um, these two matrices, um, A minus 3 times the identity and A plus 3 times the identity. So to calculate an eigenvector for each of these corresponding eigenvalues, so this left hand side was again, this is lambda is equal to positive 3, this right-hand side is lambda is equal to negative 3. So just as a reminder of what we're calculating on each side, um, we just need to now uh, see for this negative 1, 5, 1, negative 5, an eigenvalue, or sorry, an eigenvector would be any vector uh, v that maps to the identity. So again, we were looking for uh, like elements inside the kernel of each of these new matrices. And this 5, 1, 5, 1, all times some new eigenvector over here. So the way we do this is we're just going to row reduce our left-hand matrix. So we get on our left-hand side um, this matrix negative 1, 
uh, 5, 1, negative 5 is row equivalent to 1, negative 5, 0, 0. So um, elements inside our kernel here are going to be of the form uh, v uh, lambda is equal to um, you know, some multiple of 5, 1. So this is going to be our, um, so uh, maybe as a better way of, of putting this, this is going to be any vector of the form 5s, um, s. So in particular, we're just going to take as our eigenvector on this side, I'm going to take 5, 1 to be an eigenvector. I mean, it's one of, of a family of eigenvectors inside the span of this vector. And on our left-hand side, um, looking at this matrix, I'm just doing a, a quick check, everything looks good. Um, so on this side, we see that 5, 5, 1, 1 is row equivalent to, um, it's actually row equivalent to just 1, 1. So this says that um, eigenvectors um, corresponding to this eigenvalue negative 3 are all going to be of the form um, s negative s. So maybe I should be careful to make sure my s's look. <laughs> yeah. So in particular, we're going to take the eigenvector on this side to be, uh, let's just take 1, negative 1 as our as our basis for eigenvectors with this eigenvalue. So looking at this, um, we see that our eigenvalues, I can actually write these up for, um, for eigenvector, uh, so I, uh, for eigenvalue 3, an eigenvector, v3, would be 5, 1, and for eigenvalue negative 3, we could take the eigenvector 1, negative 1. So if we combine our sets of pairs of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we call this the eigensystem of a matrix. So in our previous example, for A was 2, 5, 1, negative 2, the eigensystem of A is the pair um, 5, 1, and 3, and 1, negative 1 and negative 3. And some interesting properties of this is if we have, um, uh, if we have an, a set of eigenvectors that's uh, the number of distinct eigenvalues is the same as the dimension of our matrix, um, note that that implies that this set, um, 5, 1, and 1, negative 1, this will actually span so 5, 1, and 1, negative 1, this will span uh, the entire domain of our matrix. So every element that's inside our, our domain of this matrix, um, oh, sorry, R2, not R3, every element inside this domain will be contained in the span of our eigenvectors. While we're going to have a chance in class to look at eigenvectors and eigenvalues, um, when we next come back to our video series, we're going to start looking at how we can use eigenvalues and eigenvectors when we're doing something called matrix diagonalization, and how these matrix diagonalizations will be one more way for us to look at breaking down the action of our matrix. So see you guys next time.